Absolutely. So good to be with all of you today. It is so good that I decided to wear my crazy Kahoot sweater. So um, some people call it an ugly Kahoot sweater. I say, hey, I don't think this thing's ugly. I think it's gorgeous. So that's, that's just me anyway. So, um, so good to be with all of you. My name's Matt Miller. I uh, wrote a few books, including Ditch That Textbook. Um, I taught high school Spanish for more than 10 years in little uh, public schools in West Central Indiana. And I was around when Kahoot was like a baby. And when I could go to teacher conferences and I'd do a presentation, I'd say, hey, I've heard of this thing called Kahoot. Do you know what it is? And people would go, what is this thing you're speaking of? Um, so I've been, been around it for a long time. And in uh, today's presentation, I'm going to share with you about four different ways that Google Classroom works well with Kahoot. So these two will pair up very, very nicely. We're going to go through all of it. We're going to play a Kahoot game during this webinar. I think you're really, really going to enjoy it. But first, before we get to that, you're going to hear some more specific stuff about Google and Google Classroom from Jenny. So let me pass it on over to Jenny. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for uh, having me here. I am really excited to share a little bit about Google and uh, Google Classroom. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share some slides with you. So we have a, um, a lot of really great resources that we're very happy and excited to share with the greater education world, um, especially as um, instructors and, and ed leaders such as yourself are moving to remote instruction. And um, obviously the first one being Google Classroom, it's a way that we've seen so many folks really take advantage of um, a one-stop shop to organize instructional materials and supports to help their students continue on their learning journey even when they can't see them in 3D every day. Um, for those of you who've never used Google Classroom, you can see um, it's as simple as hopping in and being able to share a class code or directly um, inviting your students. You can create all different types of assignments um, and interact with your Google Drive to create docs, slides, forms, um, sheets, etc. Assign them directly to students and even do group work. You can make direct copies for them um, or have them collaborate. You can also have them um, use YouTube videos so that they can learn via video. And what's really great is you can assign it in advance. Um, so I'll just kind of scooch back a little bit here and you can see it's really great to be able to schedule your assignments. So if you're like me and I like to do a lot of my uh, teacher planning over the weekends, um, you can take your Sunday night to schedule out assignments for your students for the entire week or even um, moving forward. And you can always edit assignments uh, down the road if you don't want to do what you had scheduled. So a lot of great way to uh, create a one-stop shop for your students to find out what they're doing, um, get access to content, and even use different tools within the G Suite ecosystem. Like you can see here, um, you can use Jamboard for whiteboarding and uh, Google Forms for assessments that'll auto magically grade it for you and organize it all in your Google Drive. So it's a really great way to stay organized um, amongst all the digital uh, all the digital work that you have assigned to your students and then even have your grade book integrated with it as well. I'm really excited today because Matt's going to share with you how you can take these Google Classroom assignments um, from assigning these creative assignments uh, with productivity tools to you know publishing something like a slide deck to take it to that next level to have interactivity through Kahoot because we really love to see See students using things like discussions to interact with each other, having them uh, assess their participation through classroom in that way, or providing a rubric for conversation. But sometimes you want to gamify it and take it to that next level to add that element of fun. And when we're thinking about how we're creating that integration, um, we want to make sure that our, our learning has that element of engagement. We like to say almost like an adventure. And through classroom, you can have your kids choose their own adventure by giving them different options options for learning. So you can say, hey, why don't you try creating a Google Doc here? Why don't you create a slide? Um, or why don't you create a Kahoot? So a lot of different ways for you to have different activities to access different ways of engagement for your student. But Classroom can be the hub to uh, launch all of that thinking for all of your students. 
finally, really thinking about project-based learning. Um, now that our students are not with us in 3D, it's a really great opportunity to take advantage of the um, more openness in schedule and assign some more in-depth projects for them to think a little bit more deeply about their learning. So thinking about how to assign um, project-based learning opportunities for students to engage in that cross-subject collaborative project, apply, applying that prior knowledge and exploring them to, inspiring them to explore new topics. I know in many places like in Philadelphia um, to maintain equity uh, and due to lack of access or accessibility of features, we want to make sure that um, we're, we're kind of level setting, introducing new content to certain student bodies and to uh, certain communities when we can't have accessible um, opportunities for everyone. So project-based learning is a great way to take already um, learned content and information that our students have already been exposed to and dig in a little bit deeper to unpack those concepts at a much more complex level so that our students can continue growing and progressing in their learning journey. And again, Kahoot can play a part in that as well. So to really uh, dig in deeper to uh, all of the resources we have at Google for Education to support you in distance learning, we've developed two sites for you. One is Teach From Home, which is your uh, level zero, I'm feeling really uncomfortable with everything, I want a quick place to get started site, or for those of you who have some exposure to digital learning and G Suite tools, if you want to dig in a little bit deeper to uh, these distance learning practices and how G Suite can really help you in your education journey, check, it our COVID, check out our COVID-19 resource page, both links here on the screen, and I'll drop them in the chat as well. And with that, to tell you how to use uh, Google Classroom to launch an amazing Kahoot adventure, I'm going to turn it back over to my friend Matt. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Jenny. That's that was a that was a really good introduction into uh, Google Classroom, which is really sort of the focus of what we're going to talk about here in this webinar. Like I told you earlier, we're going to find ways that Kahoot works well with Google Classroom. You know, Google Classroom, like Jenny was saying, is kind of like your home base or your hub for your class. And to be able to get activities out to them, there's a wide variety of ways to do that. And of course. Um, that's something that we can definitely do with Kahoot. And so I've got a handful of different ways that we can do that. But first, before we do that, what do you say we play a Kahoot game? Just to get kind of connected and make sure that we're all ready to go and everything. So um, what I'm gonna be doing is something that you can definitely do as well um, in your own classroom. Uh, in your own virtual classroom, in your own remote classroom, and it's this. The idea that if you start up a video call with your students, you know, with whatever platform you're using, if you're using Google Meet or Zoom or Skype or whatever, you start up that video call, and then you're able to share your screen to show the join screen for Kahoot, and then the students can all join. Um, that's something that I'm going to model for you right here. So for you watching, here's what you're going to need to do. One of a couple of things. Um, number one, if you've got another device like a cell phone or something, go ahead and grab it and you can respond to the questions on your cell phone. This is something your students can do too. If you don't have a cell phone or if you just don't want to operate that way, another easy way to do it is to move the webinar onto half of your screen and then pop open a new tab that's got your place to respond to the Kahoot and on the other side of your screen. So kind of like split up your screens or bounce between two tabs or something like that. Lots of ways to do that. So with that all said, I'm gonna go ahead and put the join screen up here so you all can go ahead and jump in. And so while people are joining, I'm gonna go through those steps one more time. So, if you've got another device like a cell phone, probably the easiest way to do it is to pull up, and again, you can see up at the top here, kahoot.it. That's the place that you want to go to join the game. So you go to kahoot.it and you follow all of the prompts and everything. It asks you for the code, it asks you for your name, and you can see a whole bunch of people are jumping in already. If you don't have a, another device, or if you just want to run it all on one, you could, you could make it so that one window has the webinar, 
on half of your screen and another window has the Kahoot game on the other half of your screen. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Now again, one more time, as several of you are joining, as hundreds of you are joining, um, I wanted to tell you real quick one more time how to do this as a teacher. So as a teacher, what you want to do is you want to start up that video call with your students, whether it be Google Meet or Zoom or whatever. You start up that video call and then you share your screen. And when you share your screen, you can put the Kahoot join screen on just like this, um, just like I've got it. The students are going to be able to see your screen. They can't see your face. I mean, unless your, your video call platform has it set up this way, but they're going to be seeing your screen. And so anything that you do on your screen, they'll be able to see and uh, participate with. So that's, um, that's kind of the way that I'm running it right now. So it looks like we're getting lots and lots of you joined in here, which is good. So um, I'm going to give you just another couple of moments to get into the call. Have you ever seen a Kahoot game where you have 686 people in it? Make that 690. Wow, that's a bunch. I know every time that they do these webinars, there's always hundreds and hundreds of people, but this is just not normal for me. This is great. So um, one thing that I've done that I'll mention real quick, I'm trying to buy you a little bit more time if you're still trying to join. Um, one thing that I've done is that I've muted my tab. Um, and so being able to mute your tab or just mute your um, music, that means that you're going to be able to talk. This is something I'm going to touch on in the webinar a little bit. But um, if the music is blaring and all the students hear is the music, then that's going to make it hard for you to talk too. So um, that's something to consider. So, okay. It looks like things are starting to level out just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And let's get this game going. What do you say? Okay, so we got some pretty easy questions to get started here. Here is your very first one. It's a multiple choice question. It's just a poll. We're not going to be doing this for points. What's your role in education? Just curious to see who's here. Are you a teacher? Are you a tech or instructional coach? Are you an admin or other? And I know that other category has lots of stuff in it. So if I didn't get you in one of the other three and I had to lump you into other, my apologies. All right, this is set up for 30 seconds, but I may skip forward a little quicker. So we're going to give you about three more seconds. Three, two, one. Let's see who's here. Whoa, mostly teachers. All right, 81% teachers, 7% tech and instructional coaches, 3% admin, and then there's a whopping 9% in the other. So again, apologies that I couldn't get all of your titles in there. I just tried to pick some of the big ones. So. All right, let's do another question. What do you say? How's remote learning going? How is it going for you? Now you'll notice that instead of words for your responses, I put in pictures. This is another feature that's still sort of newish in Kahoot. And this is something that, that you can use when you're building out Kahoot games for your students, is instead of using words, you can put in pictures. This is really good for vocabulary sometimes, um, good for students whose main language is not English. All right, let's see how it's going. Oh, so we got a mixture. Oh dear, we have 43% of you that have the meh face. But we've got 25% who are saying it's going awesome, really good. We've got 11% of you crying. And then we've got the, the crazy eyes here for 21% of you. So we're kind of spread all the way across. And hopefully, if you were in one of these bottom two, maybe you have migrated up to the meh face. So hopefully, you're headed in the right direction. I hope anyway. OK, let's do another question. How much have you used Google Classroom with students? I'm curious to get a feel for how, how familiar you all are with Google Classroom. So do you use it all the time, sometimes, occasionally, or never, at least not yet? And my guess is, is that for some of us, it's changing over the last couple of weeks. We may have gone from occasionally to sometimes, or may have gone from never to all the time now. So, all right, let's take a look and see. Okay, lots of you are saying all the time, that's great. But we've got 20 that say never, not yet. So you're gonna get to see a couple of examples of how this works. And then of course we've got 18% sometimes and 11% occasionally. All right, this is very interesting. I'm getting to know a lot about all of you. All right, let's go on to our, 
our final question. How much have you used Kahoot with students? So we just touched on Google Classroom. Now let's ask about Kahoot. Do you use Kahoot all the time? Sometimes, occasionally, or never, not yet? No shame if it's never, not yet, because you got to figure, figure these things out at some point, right? Three, two, one. And let's look at our answers. We've got 36% say sometimes, and then 22% for all the time, 21% occasionally, and 21%. Look, this is pretty evenly divided down here. Okay, so this is very interesting. What we've just learned is that most of you are teachers who are having kind of a meh experience with um, remote learning. And the majority of you use Google Classroom all the time, but use Kahoot some of the time. That's interesting. Okay, I have one more thing to show you here. And this next one is actually a slide. And it isn't a question. This is one of the premium features. And by the way, like Isabella said earlier, you can access all of the premium features during the school closures because of coronavirus. Um, and so she's going to have some more guidance. I know she gave you some information on that earlier. She'll give that to you, I'm sure, at the end too. But um, this is a slide. And this is where you can just put some text and some images up there. And I wanted to share this with you because this is a freebie. I always like to ask teachers, I say, hey, what's a teacher's favorite price? And of course, the answer to that is free. We love free things. So I've got a couple of free ebooks on my site that I wanted to tell you about real quick. Um, that link down at the bottom, ditchthattextbook.com slash 101. It's not a clickable link. You can't just go down and click on it. But if you copy and paste it into your browser or if you write it down for later or something, um, that's a place where you can go get all of those free ebooks. It's got lots and lots, you know, dozens of practical things you can use in your classroom right away. And it's also got a whole bunch of free templates for teachers that you can download and you can use in your classroom. So if you want to check that out, that's at ditchthattextbook.com slash 101. So I like to give away things for free if I can. So, um, okay. So Kahoot game done. That was fun, right? So if you've got that open in another tab or if you got it open on your phone, then you can go ahead and put that away because we are going to switch. Get You see my eyes over here. This is on my other screen and I'm getting ready to show you some slides because we've got a bunch of really useful things that you can do with Google Classroom and Kahoot. And so we're going to touch on some of those. I'm getting my slides ready for you right here. Okay, and remember that we are going to have a question and answer time. So if anything was unclear, like if, um, let's say the, the way that I shared my screen so that we could do the Kahoot game, if that was unclear, or if any of these ideas that I'm gonna share here are unclear, please, please, please drop those into a, a question in the chat and Isabella is going to be gathering those and she's going to be able to share those with me and with Jenny. Jenny is still here. So if you have Google related questions, Jenny can definitely take those. If you have some Kahoot related questions, I can certainly take those. Um, yeah, somebody will be happy to answer as many of the questions as we can. So, okay. So this kind of gives you an idea of what we're going to touch on in this webinar. I'm going to just kind of march through all of this and if you're looking at these slides and you're going, oh man, I wish that I just had these slides and I could go back and refer to them so I knew how to do all of this, you're in luck. I've got something else for you for free, but I'm not going to give it to you until the end. So you got to hang with me all the way until the end. I think you're really going to like it. So these are the things that we're going to be touching on. Challenge mode with Google Classroom. We're going to be talking about hosting a Kahoot game via Google Meet. We just talked about that actually a little bit a moment ago. Um, so I'll get to show you a little more step by step how to do that. Uh, we're going to talk about how you can use reports to follow up with students in classroom. And then we're also going to talk about teaching with Kahoot using Kahoot slides and video calls. And so these are the four things we're really going to touch on. So let's dive right into the first one, which is challenge mode. And see, challenge mode is a little bit different than your traditional Kahoot game. If you've played Kahoot before, then you know that a lot of times in the classroom, we take that Kahoot game and we put the questions up on the projector screen or the interactive display in the front of the room. Students get their devices and then they respond to them in person. 
And that's what we call a synchronous game. That's where everybody is all together at the same place at the same time. Challenge mode is a little different. Challenge mode is asynchronous, which basically means you set it up so that students can access it before a certain deadline. They open it up and they're able to play it on their own at their own um, pace at their own time. And so if you want to see how that looks within Kahoot and within Google Classroom, just watch here. So here's what you do. You're going to go to Kahoot. So just head to Kahoot.com, log into your teacher account, and you need a Kahoot game. Now, of course, with a Kahoot game, you can do one of the Kahoots that you've created yourself, which is what I've got up here. Or you can also, um, with a lot of them, you can go search and find other people's Kahoot games. So you don't even have to necessarily create one yourself. And so you go find a Kahoot game, and then when you find the one that you want, you hit this green play button right here. And so once you're done with that, once you hit the play button, it's going to give you this little pop-up window and ask, do you want to do the teach version or the assign version? The teach version is the one that we just did a moment ago where we all play it at the same time. The synchronous game, right? But that's not what we want. What we want is the assign. And like it says down here, assign a challenge game to learners who play it at their own pace. That's what we want for this. So by doing that, we click on assign and it's going to give us some options. So we're going to assign the challenge. And again, like I said earlier, remember the challenge is the one that students can finish by a certain time at any time. And so with a challenge, you've got to pick a deadline. So for instance, with this one, if we said that you have to finish it up by April 17th at noon, then you know that, that would give them a couple of days to do it and they can do it at any time between now and the deadline. And then you've also got a couple of other options. You've got your question timer. Are you gonna time the questions? Personalized learning is a really cool premium feature that lets you um, give students extra practice with uh, questions that they've struggled with. Um, so you can learn more about that. That's really cool. You can randomize the answer order and you can even use the friendly nickname generator. This is the one where if you want um, Kahoot to suggest some nicknames that students use instead of having them type in their own, that's something that you can do too. And so once you're done with that, you hit create just like this. You hit create and it creates a game. And now once you're done with that game, it's going to give you a couple of options. It's going to give you a link that you can copy, or it's going to have that button that says share to Google Classroom. Now, if you click on the share to Google Classroom button, it's going to give you a window that looks like this. So if you click on the share to Google Classroom button, which looks kind of like this, it's going to give you a drop down with some options. Now, if you want students to take this Kahoot game, this challenge game, and you want to give them a grade for it, I would suggest putting it into an assignment. If you want to just give them the option to do it just for fun and you're not going to put it into a grade, I would make it an announcement, which is ungraded. You could always make it an ungraded assignment too. Now, if you'd rather do it a different way on that same page where you created your challenge, there's a place where you can copy the link. And of course, you can copy the link, copy the link, stick it into an assignment, and then paste the link in. There's kind of two ways to do it. I always prefer to use the share to Google Classroom button if it's available. And so I think that's probably the easiest way to do it. And so once you share that out into an assignment, it pops up on your student's screen um, the next time they get into Google Classroom and then they can take it. So let's say with the one that we had, we were going to give them a couple of days to do it. Here's what's really nice. While students are taking it, you can always use the reports tab. This is in your Kahoot um, teacher dashboard. This is like in your Kahoot teacher account. You've always got the reports tab and then you can just go back and find that challenge that you started and click on it. And it's gonna give you data on how the students are doing, on what they're doing, on which questions they're struggling with, on who still needs to take it. So it's going to give you all of this data until they're finished. And then whenever they're finished, then you've got all of the finished data that you can use to give a grade. So pretty nice, right? This is the challenge mode. This is the one where you set up the game with a deadline. You assign it to your students through Google Classroom. 
The students click on it through classroom and then they just take the challenge, they take the game and they play it. And then you get all the data right here so that you can enter it into your grades. So that's one, that's challenge mode. That's the asynchronous version. This is the one where not everybody has to be there at the same time. But if you want to make an a synchronous version, if you want to make one where everybody is there, like they're all there in a video call, this works really nicely with Google Meet. And so, um, you know, Google Meet, there, there's a connection we can make to Google Classroom with this too. So let's imagine, just go with me for a second and imagine that you and your students are going to get onto a video call altogether. You're going to get onto a Google Meet call. Let's say that you've got it all scheduled. The students all know when to, to show up. Now, right before you start that video call, here's what you want to do. You want to jump into your Kahoot account. And this is just like step one of the previous one. You're going to go find a Kahoot game to play and you're going to click that play button. So right before the video call starts, you're going to click that play button. And then once that play button is clicked, we're going to click the other option. Remember on the previous, we clicked assign because we're going to assign it to them to work like it says right here at their own pace. This time, remember, we're all going to be in a video call together. It's synchronous. So we're going to use the teach button, play a live game together with learners over video or in class. In this case, we're going to do it over video. So we're going to hit that teach button. Now, once you hit that teach button, it's going to start to launch the game. So there's a couple of ways that you can get the video call going for your students. Now, this is a new feature in Google Classroom. I don't know if you've seen this or not. Now, this is definitely a feature that your uh, Google admin has to turn on for it to be available to you. And then um, you have to turn it on in your own Google Classroom settings. You can just click the little cog in Google Classroom and you can turn on the Google Meet option. But if you do that, this Google Meet link shows up in the header of your Google Classroom. So in this case, if we have like a government class, um, once we've turned this on, we have a Google Meet link that's assigned to that class. And so all students have to do is just click this link and boom, they're in. And so that's a really easy way to have students join the call is just to say, hey, go to Google Classroom and click on the Meet link up at the top. So if you enable that, that's super, super easy to do. If you don't have that option, then the easiest way is just go to Google Meet and create a new call. Now, there have been some questions people have had about what happens if I start a Google Meet and all my students come in and then I leave and the students still hang around afterwards. Now, that's kind of been resolved. And what the, the thing that you want to do with that is whenever you start a new Google Meet call, you want to give it a nickname. Whenever you go to, to Google Meet and you start a new call, it gives you the option to give it a nickname. And it could be anything. It could be a bunch of letters. It could be your last name. It could be your class name. It could be whatever. It could be your pet's name. You know, whatever you want to give it. When you give it a nickname and then when everybody leaves and you're the last one to leave, then everybody else, um, everybody else leaves the call. It's something like that. We can confirm that, but there's, but there's the Google has fixed it, fixed it so that it works that way now. And, um, now when you're starting the call up, if you want your students to join it, um, you start up this call and you give it a nickname and then here's the meeting details. This is what you want to copy. You want to copy the meeting details to share with your students. That's the easiest way to get them into a Google Meet. Okay. So you copy all of that. You, you copy all of that and you share, the, um, you share the call with them so that they can join it. Now, what we want to do next is after the students join the call, so we've given them this uh, Google Meet call to join. So then they're all coming in. They're saying, hey, I'm here. Um, you might actually have them mute their microphones. And so once they all get there, you want to share your screen. And you want to use this button right down here that says present now. So once everybody's there, the video call is running, you hit present now. And you're going to share your screen. 
And then once you share your screen, the students are all able to see your screen. And guess what you put onto your screen? You put the join screen on. So in that case, you switch over to the Kahoot join screen and you run the game like you would in class. So now this screen is up on your screen. Your students are seeing it. They're all jumping in and they're joining. And then whenever you're ready to go, just like normal, just like in class, you hit start. And then you just continue to go. And if you're sharing your screen, remember your students are able to see it. And so they're able to see on their screen just like what they normally would on the projector or on your interactive display. Now, I did mention over here on the right, and I talked about this earlier too, consider the game music. This is actually a tip that Isabella gave me when we were planning this, um, which I thought was really good, Isabella from Kahoot that you saw earlier. Um, so what you might want to do is you might want to either mute the music. Notice there's a little button right up here that looks like a speaker and you can click on that to mute it. If you can mute your tab, that's great. Um, but if the music is going and it's going really loudly and you're trying to talk to your students, it can be tricky. So that's a little pro tip that you can use whenever you're doing this over a video call. All right. So we've talked about how we can use challenge mode to give students a Kahoot game they can play on their own at any time. We've talked about how to use Kahoot in a video call like a Google Meet so that we can share that video call with the students and then share the game so we can all play it together at the same time. How about this? Let's say we got done with one of those two things and we have some data. That is one of the nice things about Kahoot is that we do have the reports tab. And the reports tab gives us a bunch of information about how our students have done. You can see this is the teacher uh, dashboard. This is like the teacher account inside of Kahoot. And there's the reports tab right there. So once we click on the reports tab, of course, we can look at the summary and see how everybody did. We can click on the players and see who played. We can look at the questions and we can, we can display feedback. So we've got all of this information that we, can, that we have at our disposal. And so the question is, what do we do with it? So let's say I looked at this and I realized that there were just a couple of students that really struggled with some questions. And maybe there were the questions that I didn't expect them to struggle with. And so I wanna provide them some extra feedback or I wanna follow up with them. Google Classroom is actually a really good way to do this. So here's what we've got. Using reports to follow up with students in Classroom, we follow the student progress and reports. So we've clicked on the reports tab and we're watching and watching and watching and we see how they've done. Now we identify some students who need some extra help. Let's say that maybe, you know, there's one student in particular and you really want to check in with them. So what you do is you switch back over to Google Classroom. And if you have assigned a Kahoot game as an assignment, this is the perfect place to follow up with them. So what you can do is you can go into to Google Classroom and you click on that assignment and you pull up the student work. And so within the assignment, you click on the student work tab and it displays all of this. And then you can choose a student to give feedback to. So we just click on their assignment. And what it does is it pops open a place where you can give private comments. These comments are just between you and the student. And so just going down to that one individual student's assignment, you click on their assignment and you go down into the private comments. This gives you a place where you can interact back and forth, just you and the student. And since it's within that assignment, that means that the student's going to know what we're talking about. We're talking about this particular Kahoot game. So you could say, I noticed you struggled with questions about reducing fractions. And then that's where you can ask them some follow-up questions. If you have a link to a video you want them to watch, you can drop it in there. And then they can go back and forth with you. Now, the other thing that's really nice about Google Classroom is that if you start interacting with a student in the private comments, if you have the Google Classroom mobile app and you turn on notifications, whenever a student writes back to you in private comments, it'll give you a push notification. You know, push notifications are the little banners that drop down from the top of your cell phone whenever you get a text message or a notification from an app. You can interact with students just like that too. So you pull that little notification down and you're able to see it and jump right over to the 
Um, you can either jump into the classroom app and then type your feedback there. Or with some phones, you can just hit reply right in that notification and you don't even have to jump into the app. So having the Google Classroom mobile app sometimes is really, really nice when it comes to doing this, um, doing this individual feedback. So using reports to follow up with students um, and then jumping into Classroom and doing that through the private comments is a, is a really good way to go. All right, so we're through three of them. Let's jump to the fourth one. And this fourth one is one that you might not have ever thought of using Kahoot to do. And so on our first one, remember we talked about assigning a challenge that students could do anytime. In the second one, we talked about doing a video call and hosting a live Kahoot game there. And then of course, in the third one, we just talked about using reports and following up with students. Now, I think a lot of times people think of remote learning with Kahoot and they think of doing the live game. Let's do a video call, let's pull up the game, let's share it with our students, and let's play the game together. And that's fine. But what if it was less of you playing a game and more of you using Kahoot to teach? So this is a little bit of a twist on a traditional Kahoot game. So kind of go with me on this. So think about your traditional Kahoot game and let's say you, it has, you know, like 12 questions and it's just question after question after question after question. What if instead of just asking 12 questions, what if we displayed a little bit of information using a text slide or an image slide? Do you remember when we played our Kahoot game earlier and I put that picture of the eBooks and I put the link up there and that was just a slide? This is one of the really cool premium features that Kahoot has. And of course, you know, if your school is impacted by the coronavirus and school closures, those premium features you can get and you can use this. And so what you can do is you can just create an image slide or a text slide. So imagine using these, you give them a couple of slides with some information and then you ask them a question. And then you give them a couple more slides and then you ask them a question. And if you kind of teach in that way where you give them some information and then you ask a question, give them some information and ask a question. Now it's way more interactive. It's way more hands-on and the students aren't just sitting there listening to you, um, you know, talk on and on and on. So if that sounds like something interesting, that's what we're going to look at real quick. So here's how you would do it. Number one, you would create a new Kahoot game. Or of course, like I said earlier, you can duplicate an existing Kahoot game. You know that you can search through the millions and millions of teacher created Kahoot games, right? And if you use that duplicate button, it's under the little, um, the little three dots and you use that duplicate button. With some of them, you can make a copy of it and you can, you can edit it yourself. So anyway, let's say we start a new Kahoot game and we add some slides to it with some teaching points and we add some questions to interact with the students slide question slide question slide question we go through and we add them all and we finish that kahoot game so now it's done and it's ready to go so now whenever you're done again like we said earlier you hit that play button and then Depending on what you want to do, no, with this one, you definitely want to use the teach button. Again, this is playing a live game together because you're going to talk about some of those text slides or those informational slides, right? So we're going to do this just like we did it earlier with Google Meet by hitting that teach button. And so that's going to let us present the game on a video call. Now, the next steps are going to look pretty familiar because we just touched on this on number two. This is where you go into Google Meet and you can grab the meeting details and share them with your students so they are able to join the call. Or, of course, as we mentioned earlier, um, you're able to use your Google Meet link in Classroom if you've, uh, if you've enabled that. Remember, that's the one where I said it puts it up in your banner. And if your admins have enabled this, you can just go up to the little settings cog up at the top and choose to enable Google Meet within your classroom. 
And so that could be an easy way for them to get in too. But really, either way, students join the video call. And then once they're in the video call, you switch over to your Kahoot join screen and you share your screen. Remember, you share your screen with the join screen on it. So that's what your students see. And then you run the game like you would normally. And the only difference here is you have some questions, but you also have some slides. So imagine now your students have all joined the game and you throw up a slide like this, or maybe a couple of slides and you teach for just a little bit and then you switch to a question. And then they all go and answer the question and that gives you a pulse of how well they're understanding or what they're thinking. Then you go on to another slide and you do a little teaching and then you go on to another question. And of course, there's a wide variety of questions you can use too. These are multiple choice questions. You got the puzzle questions where students have to put something in order. Um, you know, there's a, there's a wide variety of things that you can use within the game. It doesn't just have to be multiple choice questions and slides. But by bouncing back and forth between those, you can actually teach new material instead of just, you know, marching through some slides and talking to the students. So, to recap real quick, these are the things that we just talked about. You remember how I mentioned earlier that there was something, um, something coming, a little surprise coming at the end of the call? We're almost there. It's actually on the next slide, so be prepared. So this is what we talked about so far. Challenge mode with Google Classroom. If you want to set it up so students finish it by a deadline and then put the assignment in Google Classroom. Host a Kahoot game via Google Meet. You start up that video call, you put the Kahoot game on the screen, and then students answer the questions while you run the game on the video call. Use reports to follow up with students in classrooms. So you watch those reports, you watch your student progress, and then if there's someone that needs a little bit of extra help, you go into Google Classroom, you open up that assignment with the Kahoot game, and you use those private comments to send them a message and say, hey, let's talk about this. And then finally, the fourth one, teach with Kahoot slides and video calls. So you start up that Google Meet, you open up your Kahoot game, and on some of the slides, you do a little teaching. On some of the questions, you do a little asking and some teaching and some asking and some teaching and some asking. And all of a sudden, you've got a more engaging way to teach. Now, if you're looking at all four of those and you're like, Matt, this is great, but I am never, ever, 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 ever going to remember all of this you're in luck because I've got something for you. So this is a link that I think you're going to want to hang on to. I have taken all of my slides from all four of these things and I've turned them into infographics. You can see one of them over there to the right. This is the last one that I just did, Teach with Kahoot Slides using Google Classroom. And so if you go to this link, which... Um, you know, the, probably the easiest way is to, you know, copy it down. I'm sure there's some ways that we can send it out. I'll tweet it out on Twitter, too, afterwards. Ditch that textbook.com slash Kahoot Classroom. This is a web page that I made on my website that has all of my slides. It has all of those infographics that I just made for you. And it's got... Um, the videos embedded of all of my Kahoot webinars. So I did one earlier last week, and then I'll put the one up from this one too. So if you hang on to that link, and yes, you can share it with other people if you want to. If you think that they would benefit from it too, um, feel free to share that with colleagues or um, put it out on social media, whatever you'd like. Ditch that textbook.com slash Kahoot Classroom has four infographics of how to do all of these things. So you can see it step by step and it's got all of my slides, and it's got the video replays all in one place. So you can definitely, definitely check that out. And as I did mention earlier, they, there are those free eBooks that you can check out. Um, that also signs you up for my email newsletter where I'm sharing lots of um, uh, creative, practical ways to use that technology to do remote learning, sharing stuff every week. Uh, DitchThatTextbook.com slash 101 is where you can get that. So, um, so anyway. That gives you some stuff that you can work with. Hopefully that's been useful. Hopefully there's been some stuff that you can use in your own classroom to teach. Um, feel free to use any of that, to use any of the links and all of that. Thanks everyone, have a great day and stay safe. Thanks, take care.